Hello learning birds, this is Eric Buffington and today our lesson is about the literary device of imagery. We're going to talk about imagery, what it is, how to find it. So first off, what is imagery? Imagery is when an author uses descriptive language that helps the reader to better understand what's happening. It's important to remember that imagery can ha mean making an image and we often think of it that way, like it's imagery, it must be making an image of some sort. But it can also appeal to your other senses as well. Descriptions that appeal to your senses to try and make them real. So let's talk about the different senses. We could say it was sunny, which is, is something familiar for most of us. We've, we've experienced sunshine, but we might not have experienced, um, we might have experienced different sunshine. So let's be a little bit more specific. The sunlight filled the fields with golden rays. This is a definitely much more descriptive and it helps us to get a little bit more of the atmosphere and what does it mean it was sunny? Well, the sunlight filled the field with its golden rays. It's a little bit more of an image that it's making in your mind. So this is using the sense of sight, telling us something and how it looks. The door closed loudly. This is a sound. You could say that. It's, it's a sound that's pretty loud, I guess. Or we could say the door slammed shut echoing through the entire house. The word echoing is a much more active word and it helps to portray an image that we can hear. Have you ever heard a door slam so loud that it felt like the walls shook a little bit and it echoed throughout the entire house? This helps us make an image of what that might have sounded like and it definitely appeals more to our senses. So again, this is imagery. When we start to create images in the reader's mind, using the different senses. Let's talk about two more. Um, the cupcake was good. That's not very descriptive. The frosting melted on her tongue, making her forget everything but its sweetness. Now we're talking about how it tasted. It tasted sweet. All right, we didn't know. Maybe the person likes lemon um, cupcakes and it was really sour before. And they say, well, it was good. But now we know the cupcake's sweet. We know that it has uh, frosting on it that melts in your mouth. It makes it definitely seem a lot more real and creates more of um, a relatable image. The cat was soft. Okay. As I rubbed the silky fur of the cat, the small cat, I felt like I was touching a delicate cloud. So this here is giving us that image of what the cat felt like. It also adds in that it was a small cat and um, so it's using some descriptive language that helps us to feel like we're actually there. That's an example of imagery, a couple of examples of imagery. I want to share with you something from the book 1984 by, by George Orwell. It says, outside even through the shut window pane the world looked cold. Down in the street little eddies of wind were whirling dust and torn paper into spirals and though the sun was shining and the sky a harsh blue there seemed to be no color in anything except the posters that were plastered everywhere wow you can really feel and sense and and sort of imagine that you were there with this kind of a description right feels like there's no color on anything i'm picturing like a gray sort of dead feeling you know like that kind of gray after or right before a, a rainstorm kind of thing even though the sky you know the sun was shining and the sky was blue it just feels dark and gray and you get that kind of a feel when you read through a lot of the works by george orwell i want to also um have us do a little bit of an activity where we need to find some Im imagery. So I want you to think back to something that you've read. Something that um, you feel you can picture clearly in your mind. Maybe a favorite novel, favorite book that you've read, and you can feel like you can picture what the author wrote in your mind. That's because the author painted the picture for you using words. That author was using imagery that appeals to your senses. Go back and read through those parts and you'll see some of the tools that that author is using. Um, the reason why I'm not picking another author of my favorites is because I think this applies to everyone. We can all remember something specific. Um, it might be an imaginative set. 
um, some kind of a setting that was in Harry Potter. Some of those are extremely inventive and, and it described in a way that you feel like you're there. Maybe PETA's blue eyes from the Hunger Games or something that stands out to you. Whatever it is, I want you to look back through some of your favorite writings and pay attention to it when you're reading new writings. See how authors use imagery to create images and, and help you to experience it. And then you can also, as an author, use those same tools. So just some things to think about. The imagery can be the author making an image in the reader's mind. It uses descriptions that appeal to the senses. And imagery helps the reader to connect with what the author is trying to convey. Hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.